Hi, I'm Laura Rogers. I'm a Microsoft MVP, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about the search-driven web parts in SharePoint 2013. Here I have a SharePoint 2013 site, and I have a search-driven web part added to the page called Pop Popular Items, and these are the most popular documents that people have been looking at. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the interface looks like to add one of these uh, web parts to the page. So I'll go ahead and look at, when I click the insert, click web part, I have in the content roll-up area this new content search web part. And that is the web part where all the search results are content uh, search driven, which means that the searching has already been done, the indexing has been done on the server. And as opposed to doing the query right when the page loads, like our old content query web part used to do, the search results have already, uh, they're already there because the search has already been done. So that's how these work, a little bit at a high level. Um, also, so we have content search, and we also have this whole search-driven content category over here, which these are basically the same web part, but they just have some pre-configured settings in them to show certain types of content, certain types of filters. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my content roll-up and insert the content search web part and show you a little about, bit about what these settings look like. All right, the main, all the settings are going to be in this change query button. So there's a ton that you can do in here. First of all, our, we have our basics. So these are going to be some just sort of pre-configured pre settings in here. Like it will show us the relevant results on the right. So it will give us a little preview as we go as to what is going to be returned when we pick whatever we pick throughout this whole query web part. So I'm going to go ahead and pick um, just recently changed items. And I can pick my what scope I want. So the current site collection, just the current site. I can specify a URL or I can just say everything. Don't restrict the results. Now specify URL is great because we have a lot of situations where we want to look at content on one site that the content actually lives on another site. So that's a great way that we could do that by specifying the URL of that other site. So I'm just going to not restrict it by location. So that's going to be everything in the farm that I have access to. And then I can restrict it by a certain tag if I want to just type the name of a tag in here. So I could type like SharePoint. I have a lot of things in here that involve SharePoint. So I can type SharePoint in here and it would give us give me maybe some results that have that SharePoint tag. I'm not going to restrict it by tag. And I can also have different types of sorting. So I can have things with the most views or sorted at the top, etc. Now on my refiners page, there's a ton that I can re refine by, which means it's really just a filter where I can narrow it down. So I can have, you know, dates when it was created, who was the author, what type of file extension is it, file types, you know, more dates. And then I also have the people that have been working on it. Content types are really important, so I can maybe narrow it down to only document content types. And then maybe I want to narrow it down to uh, some metadata info. I have company policies. So people have been filling out the metadata on company policies whenever they upload them to SharePoint. So no matter where in the farm that you've uploaded a company policy, as long as you have that correct metadata assigned, we can create this uh, web part that's just called company policies and it will pull them in from all over the farm and show you all those policies. So that's one, one great way to have that rolled up information. And all people have to do is tag things. So the settings page is just a little bit of technical settings um, such as the load behavior which means it's like if you want the whole page, everything else on the page to load independently of the web part, that means if the web part takes a couple of seconds longer, it's not going to slow down the whole page loading. So that's one thing that you can change. And then the test is really just going to show me some query text. So if I'm, you know, looking at the query language of the search, I can look and see exactly what it's querying. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I can say how many um, nine items that I want to show. These are, would be how many company policies. I can say list, list with paging or slideshow. Slideshows are going to be great for like images and videos. So if you pick slideshow, it'll just show one thing at a time and it'll just sort of rotate across the page. 
And then I can pick, let's see, I'm going to pick two lines for how these are displayed. And then when I pick two lines, the property ma mappings thing actually changes. So I can say what are those two lines. So my first line is going to be the title of the document. I can make line two just be the author of the document. So that way I can see a little bit more information about it. And I can even call this, say, company policies. And OK. So now I can see I've got a nice list of my most popular recently modified or most popular company policies, however I want to tweak that, and they're displayed on the home page. And I have another same web part that I've just got the most popular items, which means the most things that people have clicked on the most, which might be the most relevant. So um, that was my quick synopsis, high-level overview of the content search web part. Thanks for watching. I'm Laura Rogers.